Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on chapter 1, and we're looking at uh, a very particular method in this lesson, algebraic division. Algebraic division, well, there are two standard methods for dividing one polynomial by another. A polynomial is something like x cubed plus x squared minus 7, and x minus 3 would also be a polynomial. The normal method taught in schools essentially uses the same process as long division. Never been a big fan of that method. There is another method, which is normally a little bit quicker when you get used to it. It thinks of a division, for instance, 23 divided by 5 or 23 over 5, in this sense that if you have 23 divided by 5, you could say that 23 is 5 times 4 plus 3, where 4 is the quotient and 3 is the remainder. You can use the same process with algebraic division. So you'd write it down as x cubed plus x squared minus 7 is equal to x minus 3 times by the quotient times by something. You'll have to work that out, plus a remainder, which you're also going to have to work out you begin with the highest power of x, the x cubed in this case, and say, well, how will I get that? x times by what would give me x cubed? Well, x times by x squared gives me x cubed, which is what I wanted. It doesn't just give me that. Uh, I also get minus 3 times x squared, so I also get minus 3x squared. With easier questions, you don't have to keep track like I am doing here, but with harder questions, it's a very good idea to. So the x cubes are sorted, we don't need to worry about them anymore. Looking at the x squared, we want 1x squared, we've got minus 3x squared, so we need to add another 4. Minus 3 plus 4 would give us 1x squared. We then have to say, well, how am I going to get this plus 4x squared? What am I going to write here? Well, if I write plus 4x times that by the x, I'll get plus 4x squared. I don't just get that, I get minus 3 times 4x as well, so I will also get minus 12x. That's the x cubes and x squared sorted. Now we move on to the x's. Going back to the original polynomial, there are no x's at all. We don't want any. We've got minus 12x. We need to get rid of them. The way to do that is to add on 12x. No, we won't have any. You then say, well, to add on 12x, what do I need to write here? I write plus 12 there, then 12 times by the x. That'll give me the plus 12x. At that point, you've reached the end of the brackets. The x cubes, the x squareds, and the x's are all sorted. Now, if x minus 3 is a perfect factor of this, the numbers will work out as well. In this case, we've got minus 3 times 12. Minus 3 times 12 is minus 36. That is not what we wanted. So in this case, there's a remainder. The remainder is what you need to get from minus 36 to minus 7, which is plus 29. Now, that plus 29 is what becomes the remainder. There are then three ways of writing down the answer. You could write it down in the way that we started off writing it down. So x cubed plus x squared minus 7 is x minus 3 times by the quotient, x squared plus 4x plus 12, plus the remainder, plus 29. A more wordy fashion would be x cubed plus x squared minus 7 divided by x minus 3 equals the quotient with a remainder of 29. More important than that is this final method, which you'll see quite a lot when you're doing work on partial fractions. x cubed plus x squared minus 7 divided by x minus 3. Again, it's equal to the quotient, plus 29 divided by x minus 3. Now, in terms of where this has come from, all we've done is go to the first line and divide everything by x minus 3. And then we have this line here. OK, question for you to try yourselves. They've told you the general form that the answer should be in, but it's exactly the same type of question as the one we've just done. So have a go yourself, pause the video, restart it when you're ready. Okay, we'll go through this quickly, but in detail. We start with the x cubes. So x times by x squared, that'll give me the x cubed that I want. But I also get minus 4 times x squared. I compare this with what I want, which is plus 1x squared. That means I need to add 5x squared, and then I'll have the plus 1x squared that I want. But I will also get, um, sorry, in order to get the plus 5x squared, I need to decide what do I write here. Well, if I write 5x there, then I'll get 5x times by the x. That gives me the plus 5x squared. 
It also gives me minus four times by the five X, so I get a minus 20 X as well. I want minus three, that means I need to add on 17 X. That means here I need to write 17, because when I time is that by the X, I'll get the plus 17 X. I then do minus four times 17 to see what I get. I get minus 68, which is not what I wanted. So there is a remainder, and the remainder in this case will be plus 73. Uh, that would be the first way that you can write down the answer. The second way of writing down the answer would be that. And the third way of writing down the answer is actually to write down what they asked us to do. If you go back to the question, they said find the values of A, B, C, and D, these coefficients. Well, A is one, B is five, C is 17, and D is 73. There's only one more example. This one is quite a lot more difficult. Uh, if you look at the question, you'll see why. On top, we now have a quartic for a polynomial, um, but the real problem is the bottom. On the bottom, we have a quadratic as a polynomial. The same method still works, but it is more confusing, and you definitely have to take care to keep track of everything that you're doing. I'll let you have a go first, and then I'll go through it with you. So pause the video, have a go, start again when you're ready. Okay, we'll go through this. Now, the idea is exactly the same. You start off with the highest power, x to the 4, and you say, how can I get that? Well, I've got x squared here. That means I'm going to need an x squared there as well. x squared times by the x squared gives me the x to the 4 I want. The x to the 4s are now sorted. Be careful to keep track of all of the other things that you also get. 3x times by the x squared gives me 3x cubed. Minus four times the x squared gives me minus four x squared. Then we move on to the x cubed. I want one x cubed. I've got three x cubed. That means that I need to take away two x cubed. In order to take away two x cubed, here I need to write minus two x. Because when I times that by the x squared, I'll get minus two x cubed. That's the x cubed sorted. Again, just be careful to keep track of all the extra things you get. 3x times by the minus 2x and minus 4 times by the minus 2x. That gives me minus 6x squared plus 8x. Now we move on to the x squareds. Well, we want plus 2x squared. We, at the moment, we actually have x squared coming from two places. We've got a minus 4x squared and a minus 6x squared. So we've got minus 10x squared in total. We actually want plus 2x squared. So we'll need another 12x squared to get that. And then you say, well, how am I going to get this extra 12x squared? What do I need to write here? I need to write plus 12. Times that by the x squared, I'll get plus 12x squared. But I will also get the 12 times by the 3x, the 12 times by the minus 4. So I'll get 36x and minus 48. Now we've reached the end of the brackets. <laughs> the x of the 4s are sorted. The x cubes, they're sorted. The x squareds are sorted. If we got exactly what we wanted here, it would be because this was a perfect factor. Now, what we've got is not exactly what we wanted, so we don't have a perfect factor. Uh, we need to be a little bit careful. So looking at the x's, we want minus 3x. We've got plus 36, plus another 8. So we've got plus 44x. Looking at the numbers, we've got plus 4, or we want plus 4, and we've got minus 48. So 44x needs to be adjusted, and the minus 48 needs to be adjusted. Well, 44 take away 47, that'll give me the minus 3 that I want. Minus 48 plus 52, that'll give me the plus 4 that I want. And those last two things that we did, that is the remainder. Um, there are three ways of writing down the answer for this. So as we just wrote it down, x to the 4 plus x cubed plus 2x squared minus 3x plus 4 equals that, times by the quotient, which in this case is x squared minus 2x plus 12. And that last little bit that we did gave us the remainder, minus 47x plus 52. In partial fraction form, you would write it down like this, where you get the quotient plus the remainder divided by the thing that you were dividing by originally. Um, and again, what the question actually said was find the values of A, B, C, D, and E. Well, in this instance, A is 1, B is minus 2, C is 12. Be careful with D and E. Uh, there's a plus assumed to be here, and we've actually got a minus 
So the D will actually be minus 47, and the E will actually be plus 52. Easy to slip up on that. Okay, that gets us to the end of the lesson and exercise 1C on page 7. Try some of these yourself till you're completely satisfied. Yeah, you've got the hang of the method. You understand how it works. Okay, thank you very much. And cheerio.